it's crazy. It's incredible how how impressive and how absolutely beautiful the landscape is here and like these these massive walls with a really thick ice sheet on top and then you have those outflow glaciers like on the sides and it's incredible and then of, of course Peterman Glacier itself where you just see like you don't even see the end of the glacier it's, you can completely lose a sense of dimension like I was flying above it on the helicopter yesterday on the way to the beach and you saw these like tiny meltwater streams and a little bit of cracks and then the other helicopter flew in and it was tiny and then that was like what you had for scale and all of a sudden you realized this glacier is huge. We drilled through the ice shelf here. The ice is about 380 meters thick, in fact, uh, and found the about three or 400 meters of water beneath. Uh, this is straight ocean water. Uh, we're two kilometers from the grounding line where the ice, the ice shelf actually is initially goes afloat. And, um, and what we're finding is at the very bottom of the ice is uh, the temperatures are really, really quite high. So we came to Peterman Glacier because we think it's a perfect natural laboratory for studying really important changes that are expected in the, on the Earth. And in particular, what's interesting about this place is it has a floating ice shelf uh, that protects a glacier that extends deep into Greenland's interior. It's sort of the drain of Greenland. comes along holding rocks and it scrapes it like this. <laughs> A little slower than that. One of our teams, which we've been calling the boulder team, is going around and finding the boulders dropped by the ice sheet. If the boulders are there, we know the ice was there. So we, we're looking for these cosmically derived um, atoms. And those atoms are being formed when they're exposed to the surface the atmosphere, essentially. So traditional means of dating glacial deposits through, were through radiocarbon dating of wood and plant material. But when you come to some place like Greenland and you look around, there's no trees and there's just moss on the ground, it's very hard to find organic material to date the glacial deposits. But there's lots of rocks. And then we get these great uh, records um, for when uh, the, the glacier was leaving and, and where it was, when, which then we can use with uh, the oceanographers or what they're seeing out in the ocean. And we get this really nice story of what was going on here over the last 15,000 years ago. And it's really complete because we're both looking at it on the surface. That's our portion of this larger project of Peterman. Uh, but we get to then combine it with the oceanographers who are working <laughs> offshore and seeing something much different than us. And combined, it's giving us a very holistic uh, story of what was going on with the ice sheet, uh, both Peterman Glacier and the larger uh, Greenland ice sheet. The ice sheet of Greenland is getting smaller, um, and that is caused by processes at the surface. Um, kind of the air temperatures are warming, and if the air temperatures are warming, um, the surface melts. Now, that's just one part to it. Um, and a second part is that as ocean temperatures warm, um, more of the glaciers are being attacked at the same time um, by warm waters from the underside. I think it's not quite clear yet how important the ocean is to the climate. And now, by coming here and actually measuring and observing these changes, we can actually point out that, yes, it is changing. And even here, we can feel these changes. And they are, they are worryingly strong. And by discovering that and by pointing that out, hopefully we can get a better understanding of what the climate is doing currently and what the climate is going to do in the near future. The big question is really, do we have changes in oceanography which are directly coupled to climate change or do we have other types of changes that are more long-term trends in, change in changes in oceanography and so I would say specifically has this happened in the past and how much are this warmer water interacting with the glaciers? Well, this is glacial clay is typically this gray color so it's all this mud coming out from either under the glaciers or sitting on the glaciers. So it drifts out here with the currents and we're out in pretty far from the ice front right now. So so this is, well I don't know how old this is, this is from the bottom of the core. So we're going to find out. It's really interesting to go and look at the geologic record because it's our 
it's, it's our way of gaining that insight of, of how these glacial systems respond to, to changing like forcings and changing uh, climates and changing environments. And there are many different types of glues. For example, what we're going to measure here, we're measuring the seafloor. So and when you have a past extension of an ice that's gone out on the yeah. seafloor, it leaves imprints. So we can see that. We can see the landforms, but then we also need to date it. Then we take sediment cores and we look at the deposition on top of the landforms and we use different me methods to date the sediments and also the succession of the sediments. And from that we can figure out how the ice behaved and when it behaved. Okay. Now I'm going to clean up a little bit and then get started. One of the species that we've been finding almost throughout is the Cicillina neotritis, and it's an Atlantic water species. It lives in chilled Atlantic water that's probably coming in from the Arctic Ocean. Oh yeah, that's that is Cicillina neotritis. Okay, you can tell us from that. So we know that it's this great unknown of like how this part of the Greenland ice sheet has acted in the past, how it's going to act in the future as the glaciers melt more, sea level could rise. That's the big thing that we're concerned with, this, this unknown about how sea level is going to change in response to melting of the Greenland ice sheet. If we really are starting to melt the Greenland ice sheet and it's really responding through its outlet glaciers, it may take hundreds to thousands of years for it to respond. So when we talk about climate change and melting the ice sheets, that doesn't mean everything's going to happen tomorrow, but we may be triggering a change that may carry on for a long time, and so we'll be seeing its effects far into the future.